This year, in 2022, the European Union approved a new, reinforced energy efficiency first principle. Now, any policy or investment decision made in the EU must consider, first and foremost, how to be energy efficient. When it comes to our role in developing Europe's grid, this means we have to consider all the alternative options before we build new infrastructure. But what does that process look like? Well, let's imagine our energy system as the transport network of a growing European capital. You want to get to work in the city at 9am. Of course, everybody else wants the same thing. So the city is saturated and no one can get to where they need to be. The same thing happens to overloaded transmission lines. We call this congestion. First, let's look at ways to quickly optimize this mess. We could check whether you could do your job without coming into the city, or whether you could live closer to work. We call this efficiency. You could be asked to work from home on alternating days, or stagger your arrival between 8 and 10 a.m. We call this flexibility. The city could give you a bonus if you cycle, sell your car or take public transport, and tax you if you use your car at peak times. We call this regulation. We could make the system smarter by adding smart traffic lights or improving coordination between different types of public transport by promoting car sharing or creating cycle paths next to existing roads. We call this innovation. These are all great improvements, but they won't be enough on their own. The demand on the city is too big. So when optimization isn't enough, we look at building new infrastructure, like new subway routes, aerial highways, or cable cars. It'll take time and money, but in the long run, it'll be the only way to keep the ever-growing population moving smoothly around the city. The same is true of our energy system. Optimizations or non-wire system efficiency measures are already helping, but they can only go so far. They need to be implemented alongside the construction of additional infrastructure, like transmission lines, offshore islands and energy storage systems. By combining both optimization and investment in infrastructure, we'll have a power system with the capacity to welcome large and increasingly necessary quantities of renewables, leading our way to a carbon-free future. This is how we at ENSOE prepared the 10-year network development plan always considering alternative options first to ensure that any proposed infrastructure is the right fit for Europe's needs. Head to tyndp.ensoe.eu for more information or contact us at tyndp.ensoe.eu.